Hello everyone. I want to share with you some things that the Lord has told me from 2013 to 2015. And they were a lot of um, mostly statement dreams, a couple of question dreams. Um, but um, I've written down most of them. And so I want to share with you beginning back in 2013, some of the things that the Lord has told me. And um, Okay, um, one of the dreams was many righteous shall die. And um, when I woke up, I didn't know what the Lord was talking about at all. And um, now I wonder if he was telling me about the people, the Christians in the Middle East that have been beheaded by ISIS because many righteous indeed have died. Um he told me the beginning of the end is in 2013. The time is now. America is Mystery Babylon. Judgment is in the land. I will be heard. Jesus is the intelligent designer. Um, I also dreamt that in my dream I heard the Big Bang Theory is a lie. And which I already knew that and already knew the intelligent designers, Jesus, but he now I can say, you know, I know it, but the Lord also told me in a dream. Um three nights in a row I mean not three nights in a row, but um three times in one night I heard destruction is coming. Um okay, and uh, I heard in a dream, America capitulates freedom. I heard, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. In a dream, I heard, heaven is not free. Jesus paid the price for you to go there. Um, I heard, continue to lay people at the feet of Jesus until the royal apostasy. I had a dream in which I heard legion war, legion war. I heard the end of all things is upon you. I had a dream and I heard the judgment is next. The last Jordan is on its way. The next big scene on God's calendar of events is the rapture. The day of the Lord is near. Most recently, tell them to fall on their face and cry out for revival. So those are um, some dreams that I've had since 2013. And um, also I wanted to say, I wanted, I'm not endorsing any candidate for um, a president by any means, but um, I, I want to say that I was, uh, a while back at first, initially, I was supporting Donald Trump until the Lord gave me a dream about him. And it was more like a night vision, really. Um, and the Lord showed me something about him that, unfortunately, I don't feel at liberty to share with anyone because, um, well, I'm just not comfortable at all sharing it. And I don't think it would be wise for me to do so. But after I had that night vision, I was asleep, but it didn't seem like a dream. It seemed like I was really there watching him. And when the Lord... Um, showed me this dream and I have I've mentioned something about Donald Trump before but I haven't told you I don't think I said that I had a dream about him but I did and um, the next day when I woke up from that dream I had a totally different outlook on him and I would never vote for him because I, all I would tell you is that the Lord showed me that he's not what he pretends to be and once again, I'm not endorsing any candidate. I don't even know yet who I'm going to vote for. Um, I don't, I'm not even fully convinced we will have another election. Um, because if some, the way things are going, if some terrible thing happened where um, we were attacked or something of that nature, then martial law could be declared and there wouldn't be an election. But there may be an election. I'm not saying God, God has not told me at all if there's not going to be one or if there is going to be one. Um, he did tell me in a dream uh, 
that Obama would be reelected again, and I've already told you that, and and he was, but he hasn't told me anything about who the next president will be, if there will be another president. He hasn't told me anything like that. Um, but um, my best friend and I, my best friend is very, she's very, she loves Donald Trump. She talks about him all the time. Well, I did too. At first, as I said, I talked about him. We, she and I, um, this is the first time actually that she and I have agreed, had agreed on a candidate. And we usually voting in on the opposite parties and um, I'm not a I'm an independent I vote for the person and not for the party and I always want to vote for someone who is godly and um, who um, the one who has the most godly virtues I would say that's who I, I go with and um, in the last election I couldn't vote and um, a lot of my family members were very upset with me because I wouldn't vote for Obama or Mitt Romney and and they were saying, well, like, oh, Mitt Romney is the lesser of the two wheels. And I said, well, I cannot vote for him because he's a Mormon. And um, I just, that was, you know, I said, I have to do what I feel is right, you know, in the eyes of God. And I just don't feel, I'm not voting for him. So I didn't vote for either one of them. And like I said, my family were really upset with me. Um, but I just have to answer to the Lord. So I couldn't vote for him either one of them. And so um, I just want to tell you that the Lord has showed me something about him. He's not what he seems. That's all I'm going to say. He's not what he seems to be. And um, so my friend was wondering like, well, why aren't you now? Why are you not talking pro about Donald Trump? I wasn't really saying anything about him. I would just listen and smile. And say, well, I'm not really sure who I'm going to vote for now. And but I, I didn't even tell my best friend what the Lord showed me. Um, so I think we'll probably all see eventually it'll come out in the, uh, open. Well, people, well, people will see that he's not what he seems. Um, so I just want to say that, um, I believe still that we are in the end of times and, um, Friday, I think Friday night I saw a commercial that's made by the Pope and it's on his um, website. It's called, I think it's called the 2016, the year of mercy. And my mouth just dropped open when I watched it because I know that the Lord showed me in March of 2013 that he's going to be the false prophet, but it just shocked me that he's so blatant about what he's doing. And this one more thing, when I be first, Jesus first began giving me these visions and dreams. Um, I'm a very unlikely candidate because I'm a Southern Baptist preacher's daughter that didn't even believe in uh, that vision still happened today. I'm, so I'm an, in my opinion, I'm an unlikely candidate to have this thing occur in my life. But I was sitting at my table, home alone, and I had um, my earbuds in. I was listening to the um, audio Bible, and I just had my eyes closed. And this is the a vision that I had before, right before I started having all these visions, end time visions and dreams. And um, I, in this vision with my eyes closed, I suddenly saw Jesus in front of me in, with my eyes closed. And he was on a white horse. He was in um, regal robes, but I think they were regal robes, but probably not like the robes that he's going to wear when he's ruling. But he had on a, a sash. It was a, a twined. It looked like a rope sash. It was intertwined. He had a crown on his head. And he looked at me with sorrow he looked at me i could see so much love in his eyes but I, I could also see so much hurt in his eyes and um it made whenever i saw him and i could see the sorrow and the hurt in his eyes and the love it just i mean i could feel the presence of god so strongly that i just can't explain what i felt and then um, I saw this hand, uh, it was like a big, big hand, Reach, it was just like came down from heaven. And in, this, in the hand was a box, a small box, and it was gift wrapped with a big, beautiful bow on it. And he laid it on my table in front of me. Now, this is my vision. I don't have my eyes open. He laid it down in front of me. And then it ended. And I opened my eyes and I said, oh my goodness, when I get 
excited or nervous, I said, oh, I would say, oh my goodness. And so I was saying, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And I was just crying. I could not stop crying. I was just crying and crying and crying and crying and crying. I just sat there for probably 30 minutes and cried. I couldn't stop crying because I could feel the presence of the Lord so strongly. And I was in such utter shock at what I'd just seen. And when I finally got, I thought I got control of my crying, I called my parents. And um, I said, Mom, put Dad on speakerphone and I put this on speakerphone. I want Dad to hear this. And so I was, then I started telling them while I was telling them, I just started bawling and again. And my mom would say, I can't understand what you're saying. I can't understand what you're saying. And I said, okay, just a minute. So I was trying to calm down and get control of myself. And then I tried to tell them, every time I tried to tell them, I would just cry and cry and cry. Finally, I got it out. Well, my parents, I thought they'd be really excited, but they weren't. They, I think they kind of thought that I went off the deep end or something like that. <clears throat> because as I said, we're Baptists and we don't believe in supernatural things like that. And um, so that's how it began. <clears throat> And I think, I didn't know what that gift box was. Of course, I couldn't see it in the real in reality, but in the vision I saw it. When I opened my eyes, of course, it wasn't there. But um, I think maybe that was a gift. The Lord was showing me, I'm giving you this gift of end time dreams and visions. I, I'm just guessing. I, that's what I think it was. And that's when I just kept having them, having them, having them. I just like started. And, and then one day, I mean, because my family they didn't want to hear about it and they would just like not want to talk about it and they were upset with me because I was having these dreams and visions and I was telling them and and then um so one day I was just laid across the bed and I was crying I said Lord I just want to be normal I don't want to see all this thing all these things anymore you know please take it away I don't want to see anymore and then I didn't for like a while I didn't see anything I didn't have any dreams any visions nothing it completely stopped and then um after a little while, I can't remember exactly how long, but um, maybe a few weeks, and I started feeling like I wanted to be used of God, and so I prayed again. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for saying that. Please forgive me. I don't care what people think. I don't care if people think I'm crazy. I don't care if they don't believe me. If you want me to, if you want to show me things and dreams and visions, then please do. I just want you to have your perfect will, and if you want me to warn people, I will, no matter what they think, no matter if I'm totally rejected, I will still, even by my family, I still will do what you said, what you say. And then I began having them again. And ever since then, I've been sharing and warning because um, I knew that Jesus, the sorrow in, in his eyes was the sorrow that people are not ready and that many are dying and going to hell. So um, please turn to Jesus with your whole heart. Repent. That means to turn away from your sins and follow Christ with your whole heart. God bless all of you. Jesus loves you. You're precious to him. You're precious in his sight. God bless all of you. Goodbye.